Hi, I'm Denshi, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a proper, no-nonsense, and calm guide on how to install Arch Linux. Now, before I begin the installation, this is a UEFI install. This means that this install is going to cover steps that are only compatible with relatively modern computers released in the last four to five years. Chances are you're probably using a computer that uses UEFI, so all the steps in here will be perfectly fine for you. However, if you're in doubt, just make sure you see this screen when you turn on your Arch Linux USB stick. When you plug that in and boot from it, you should see these options. And that's where our install is going to start by pressing enter on the first option or just letting it time out as it does by default. Now the system will begin booting. In that time, I wanna bring your attention towards the right of the screen where I have the Arch Linux install guide. This is linked in the description for you to follow and it's a very nice, well-written text guide on how to install the distribution. As you can see, the pre-installation section covers downloading the Arch Linux ISO. I'm making the assumption that you already have an Arch Linux bootable USB stick and you've just booted into it. You see this screen and you're pulling your hair out because you have no idea what you're doing. I'm gonna scroll down over here to the keyboard layout option because that's the first thing you're probably going to want to set. By default, Arch Linux will use the US keyboard layout. Now, chances are you're probably using that as well, but let's say you wanna use the Italian keyboard layout. In that case, you can type load keys space IT and press enter. And now you have the Italian layout. I'm going to run load keys US to load the United States one again, because I'm using that. The next step is going to be connecting to the internet. Now, I hope you do have an ethernet connection for your Arch Linux install. If you have a laptop, please stop and take a moment to plug in an ethernet cable. If you do not have an ethernet cable available or the ethernet plug on your laptop isn't there or it's broken, I guess you're going to have to use Wi-Fi. I'm not going to be covering how to use Wi-Fi, how to set that up because that's not really possible on a virtual machine. However, if you want to know how it works, I will link a guide in the description that explains how to use IWD, which is a tool you can use to connect to the internet, which is included in the Arch Linux installer USB. So if you run IWCTL, it will send you straight into their interface and you can type device list. As you can see, I don't have anything here because I don't have any Wi-Fi devices. So I'm just going to type exit and now we can get on with the install. One important thing to know about the terminal is you can type control L to clear the screen. This is going to be very useful because the terminal can get quite cluttered and sometimes you just need to clear your terminal. Anyways, to test the internet connection, we're going to run a ping command. We're going to run ping archlinux.org or any other internet address. And as you can see, it connects. Now, if you want to stop any command that's running on your terminal, all you got to do is type control C. And as you can see, it stops the command. And we're going to do control L to clear the screen again. And we're going to scroll down over here to the partitioning part. Now, as you can see, the Arch Linux install guide recommends you use FDisk. I do not recommend you use FDisk. It's not as intuitive as a different tool you can use called CFDisk. So running CFDisk on your system, pressing enter, you'll see you'll be asked for a label type. Now you're on UEFI, so you should probably type GPT. You might not see that screen, and instead you might end up on this screen by default. While you won't see a single line that says free space, you will see a bunch of partitions like this. So this is sort of like what a Windows partitioning scheme would look like. I'm not exactly sure, but it looks similar to this. Assuming you want to delete everything and only use Arch Linux, just go to each one of these little partitions and move your arrow keys, the left and right ones, to select an option. We're going to do the delete option, so we're just going to press delete and press enter. Same thing for the next partition. We're going to go over to delete and press enter. And the same thing for the other ones. Just press enter. And now we've ended up with just this free space and nothing else. We're going to press enter and delete 32 gigs or whatever the size of your drive is and type 100 capital M because we're making a 100 megabyte size partition. That's going to be our boot partition, dev sda1. Moving on to the next partition, we're gonna make this one four gigs in size. Now, you can make this four gigs or eight gigs or 16 gigs because this is our virtual memory partition. It's used by our system to store excess memory whenever the regular system memory fills up. If you do not make this partition, you're gonna end up with a system where as soon as the memory fills up, it crashes and of course you don't want that to happen now going down to the lands partition we're going to press enter and press enter again and that will automatically create a partition with the rest of the space on the system now moving your arrow keys to the right option and pressing enter we're going to type yes and press enter and as you can see we've made three partitions now you may have noticed that i didn't fiddle with the partition format over here you see linux 
file system for each of these three partitions. That's because we're gonna manually format these from the command line and not from CF disk. To do that, we're gonna wanna go to the quit option and press enter. Now we're gonna clear the screen with control L and we're gonna run the command lsblk to list our block devices. This is a very useful command just to keep a heads up on what's going on with your partitions. Now over here, there's the format the partition section on the art wiki. You can look at the commands that I'm gonna be using from here. The first thing we're going to wanna to format is our root partition. So that's gonna be our main partition where all our system files and documents and pictures and home folder is going to be stored. That will be dev sda3, because as you can see, that's a 27.9 gigabyte one. We're gonna run mkfs.ext4, ext4 is the Linux file system, space, and then dev sda3. So press enter, and as you can see, it has formatted it. Now we're gonna do the boot partitions. That's the sda1. We're gonna wanna run mkfs.fat space dash capital F space 32. That's to format it to fat32, which is the required file system. Then we're gonna press space, and type dev sda1 and we're going to press enter and there you go we formatted it to fat32 now we want to format sda2 so that's our swap partition this is pretty easy all you got to do is run mk swap space dev sda2 and press enter and there you go we've formatted it to swap okay so now we're going to want to start mounting all of our partitions so once again always start with the root partition to make things as clear as possible we're going to run mount dev sda3 and we're going to mount it in forward slash mnt this is just a standard mount directory this is where you're expected to mount the root directory if you're working on a system so we're going to press enter now we're going to want to mount the boot partition however the boot partition is going to be mounted in boot efi which is a directory that does not exist in our root partition as of now so if we want to make it we're going to have to run mkdir space dash p space forward slash mnt, forward slash boot, forward slash efi. And there you go. We've made the mnt boot efi directory. Anyway, as you can see, sda3 is mounted to forward slash mnt, but we still need to mount sda1. So running mount dev sda1 forward slash mnt, forward slash boot, forward slash efi, pressing enter, running lsblk again. As you can see, it's mounted there. And now we're gonna turn on the swap partition. It doesn't have to be mounted anywhere, just gotta turn it on. We're gonna run swap on dev sda2. And, and there you go, we've turned on swap. So if we run lsblk again, as you can see, all three partitions are activated appropriately. The root partition is an MNT, the swap partition is activated, and sda1, our boot partition, is an MNT boot EFI. Anyways, now comes the fun part, which is the installation. To do the installation of Arch Linux, we have to select the packages we want and install it into MNT. So run packstrap space slash MNT space and now we got to pick the packages now i recommend installing the ones that are listed here in the essential packages on the install guides so that's going to be base linux and linux dash firmware as you can see it says that if you have a newer sound card you might want to get the sof firmware as well for sound cards so we're going to type that in as well sof firmware and we also want a few other things to install the sudo package and all the other kind of packages that we need to compile stuff to install things from the aur which is probably one of the most attractive features in arch linux we need to install base dash devil we're also going to want the grub boot manager which is what we need to actually boot our system without this it wouldn't work and efi boot mgr which is for efi support in grub we're also going to want a text editor to edit text files on the terminal. We're going to use nano and we're going to want a network manager for when we reboot the system. That's going to be network manager with no spaces. Okay, so that should be all the basic packages we need. I'm not going to be running through installing a desktop environment and stuff. I'll probably go through that at the end of this guide. We're just doing a base install for now. So just press enter and it's going to start downloading all those packages and installing them. So just give this a minute. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, however long it takes because your internet may be slower than mine, your internet may be faster than mine. Once it kicks you back to the terminal, we're gonna come back to the tutorial and I'm gonna run you through the subsequent steps. Okay, so all the packages have been installed now and we can move on to the next step, which is generating the file system tab. So if you run genfstab slash mnt, as you can see, you'll get an output in your terminal that gives you information on the file systems that are mounted there. 
As you can see, this is all correct. Dev SDA3 is our root, Dev SDA1 is our boot, and Dev SDA2 is our swap. So that's all good, but we don't want this on our terminal. We want this on a file in our disk. So we're going to run that command again, just by pressing up on your keyboard. You can call back commands that you've already run. We're going to press space. We're going to type a greater than symbol, which sends the output over to a different file. And we're going to send it over to MNT ETC FS tab and press enter. And we can check the contents of any file in our system by running cat and then the name of the file. So MNT Etsy FS tab. And as you can see, it has the same contents as what was outputted to our terminal. So not only is this a good way to get the file system tab carried over, but it's also a great way to learn about how to redirect output on the terminal, which is something very useful if you're looking into making scripts. Anyways, with that out of the way, we can finally go and enter our installed system running arch dash ch root or change root slash mnt now we're in our system so as you can see the prompt is no longer colored because we're using the plain bash shell and now we can start configuring everything from the inside one very very important part of setting up your system is setting the time zone all you got to do is run ln this will set up a symbolic link dash sf user share zone info and now you got to select your region in my case, it's going to be Asia and then Dubai. You can press tab to autocomplete and you'll get some kind of result. And we're gonna want to link this over to Etsy local time. So pressing enter. And now if we run date, as you can see, just I'm gonna check my clock over here. Yes, it is 104, so the time is correct. Now we're gonna want to run hwclock dash dash S-Y-S-T-O-H-C. That just synchronizes the system clock. And now we're gonna clear the screen again and we're gonna do localization. Now this is another step where a lot of users get stuck on, but don't worry. I'm gonna run you through it clearly and explain what I'm actually doing. So we're gonna to wanna to run nano. Remember we installed nano before when we were installing the system. Etsy locale.gen. Now by running this, you'll be editing a file that contains all the different locales available on your system. As you can see, I'm using my arrow key to scroll down and we wanna scroll down until we find the locale you want. Now in my case, I'm gonna be using this one over here, en underscore us dot utf dash eight space utf dash eight. So all I wanna do is press the delete key to delete that hashtag or just you know, go in front of it and delete it. And now all we gotta do is run control O, press enter and control X to exit at clocal.gen. Now, if you run the locale-gen command, as you can see, it generates the locale for n underscore us dot utf dash eight, and there you go. We have generated our locale. We want to specify our locale in etsy locale.conf because some programs will be checking this file as well. So in this file, we want to type lang equals en underscore us in capital letters dot utf in capital O dot utf in capital letters as well dash eight and once again to write and quit you want to run control o press enter and control x now we can set our key map i'm not going to do that because i already have the us keyboard layout but if you wanted to change your keyboard layout on the terminal you would have to run nano etsy vconsole.conf go into here and type key map and then i don't know equals it or something i'm just gonna leave it as us you don't even have to type this because the default is us but i'm gonna do it for formality so control o press enter control x all right so clearing the screen again now we want to specify the host name so nano etsy host name and i'm gonna name this computer archie with a capital a Control O, press enter, control X to write and quit. Okay, so that's pretty much everything done that we can look at in this guide. The init RemFS, we don't have to do this because this was already done when we installed the Linux package. The one thing we do want to do is the root password. So run PASSWD, press enter, and type a password. I'm just going to do 1234 because I'm not actually installing this as a usable system, but make sure you pick a good password for your root account. So it's gonna ask you to type a password again. I'm just gonna type one, two, three, four, press enter and there you go. All right, so you're probably going to want your own personal user on the system rather than using the root user because using the root user for stuff, it's not very viable on a home system. So to add a user, we're gonna to have to run user add dash M, which means we're gonna make a home directory, dash capital G, that means we're gonna add us to a group and the group's gonna be called wheel and you'll see why I'm making that group later. And then space dash S, space forward slash bin 
forward slash bash. So that specifies the shell we're using. We're using bash, so we can just use that. Then space, and we gotta specify our name. I'm just gonna call myself Denshi. So there you go, we've added the user. Now if we run P-A-S-S-W-D Denshi, you can set your own personal password. I'm gonna set this to 1234 as well, so that's the same as my root password. Although for security reasons, you might wanna set your root password differently to your user password. Now we're going to want to set up sudo so you can actually run sudo commands because if I use the su command to switch to the denshi user, so su denshi, and if I try to run something as sudo, so let's say I want to run sudo pacman dash capital S Y U, that's to update the system. If I run that, it's going to ask me for my password. I'm going to type my password in, and as you can see, it gives me an error. Denshi is not in the sudo file. This incident will be reported. So how do we fix that? Well, first of all, I'm going to type exit to exit my regular user and go back to the root user. And now I'm gonna clear the screen and you're gonna to wanna to run editor in capital letters equals nano. That's gonna specify the editor we're gonna use for the next step, which is going to be space vi sudo or v sudo. So this edits the sudoers file. So scrolling down in the sudoers file, once again, we're in nano. Right to the bottom, there's these options over here. You wanna go and uncomment this option, which is percentage wheel all equals brackets all all. This lets anyone part of the wheel group, which remember we added our user to, run sudo commands. So now that we've edited the file, we can run control O, press enter, control X to write and quit. I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to switch back to the Denshi user, and we're going to try to run that sudo pacman syu command again. So press enter. We're going to type a password in, 1234. And as you can see, it works this time. So just like that, we've added our user to the sudoers group. So we can now run commands with sudo, which you'll see a lot online and online guides, and you will need this to install packages as your user. Now that we've done that comes the last essential steps before we reboot our system. The first one is enabling core services. So the only one we're going to be enabling today is network manager for managing our networks. So system CTL enable network manager make sure you use capital n and capital m press enter and as you can see it enabled it now if you have let's say a display manager like light dm or gdm you're probably going to want to run system ctl enable gdm or light dm but we'll get more into that later when we set up our visual environment in the meantime we're going to want to do the last key step before rebooting and that's setting up our bootloader so remember when we installed grub in efi boot manager there's a command on our system called grub dash install and then specify our disk so in this case it's going to be dev sda we're going to press enter and as you can see it installed grub but that's not over yet we still have to configure grub so for that we're going to do grub dash mkconfig space dash o to send the output over to forward slash boot forward slash grub forward slash grub dot cfg pressing enter it's going to scan for kernels and there you go it installed grub now that error where it tells you about grub disable os prober you can ignore that because we do not have that enabled that's only useful if you're dual booting which we are not doing today anyways typing exit over here will bring us back to the colored prompt so that's on the usb we're going to want to run u mount a to unmount all of our drives that are not busy and now we can reboot our system and end up in arch linux i'm going to run reboot and we're gonna just cross our fingers and hope it works. As you can see, we're in GNU Grub. It's gonna send you to the screen as soon as you boot up. We're just gonna press enter or wait for the timeout. As you can see, Arch Linux is booting up and here we are, we're in the login for Archie, which remember is the hosting we specified. Now my username once again is Denshi. The password is 1234 as we said it before. And here we are. One thing though we wanna check is make sure we have internet connection. We set up network manager last time. So as long as we have an ethernet cable plugged in, we should be able to ping denshi.org and as you can see yeah it pings it so our internet connection is indeed working okay so this is all well and good but how do i set up a graphical environment from here one thing though i'm just going to make the font bigger set font space dash d will double the size of the font in your system so you might want to do that if you're installing on a small screen so as i was saying one last thing we want to do is set up some kind of graphical environment a good graphical environment i recommend is kde plasma so to install that we're going to run sudo pacman dash capital s plasma which will install all the basic plasma stuff and to boot up into plasma to actually log into it we want to install sddm as well now we're going to press enter 
and it's going to ask for our password. So I'm just going to type my password, one, two, three, four, press enter. And as you can see, it's going to ask for the packages you want. I'm just going to press enter because those are perfectly fine. Same thing for these packages, just press enter. Same thing for this as well, just press enter. And as you can see, it's got a lot to download, so we're just gonna press enter and let it start downloading that stuff. This might take a while, so just give it a second. I'm gonna come back when it's finished. All right, so all the KDE Plasma packages have been installed now. But before we go into KDE, we wanna make sure we've installed all the packages we want. So let's say we want a terminal emulator, sudo pacman space dash capital S console. You have to have a terminal emulator on your desktop environment or you might be locked into it so you can still type commands and, and do what you need to do. We're also going to want maybe a text editor so that's Kate, that's the uh, uh, KDE text editor and maybe a web browser so Firefox should do. So pressing enter we can start downloading those packages, just give it a second, and there you go. So this should be pretty much everything we need for our little Linux desktop experience. So to start the Linux desktop, we're gonna start SDTM, which is our display manager. And to do that, we're gonna run sudo systemctl enable SDTM. But if we just run this by itself, it's only gonna enable it at boot. We wanna start it now. So to do that, we can run enable dash dash now, and then press enter. And as you can see, it kicks us to the login screen. I'm gonna type in our login. So in this case, one, two, three, four, that's our password. And that's the only user there. Press enter. And we should be booted up into KDE. Here we are, there's a KDE. As you can see, we have Kate, we got Firefox. And if we go to our application launcher, we should be able to find our terminal menu. There we are, console. And it wouldn't be an Arch Linux video if I didn't, first of all, install NeoFetch and then ran NeoFetch. So I'm just gonna do that for decorative purposes. There we are. But anyways, I've been Denshi. That was a comprehensive guide to setting up Arch Linux. Goodbye.